photos, record, do whatever. I've got nothing to hide. All right. Um, I just don't befriend students, but I can befriend you if you want to befriend me or whatever. It's fine. You know, just, just have to keep the boundaries. Um, so brushes. Uh, I've mainly got sable here tonight. Um, sable is... So I'm getting used to this. There we go. That's sable. That's a sable flat. You know sable because it's slightly red in colour. It's, it's bred with the sable mink. I don't know the ethics of it. It comes from the bottom, uh, the tail end. So um, you can buy nylon synthetic. They tend to be white when you first get them, and then they very quickly change colour. There's nothing wrong. And some synthetics actually is a synthetic. Nothing wrong with them. Like all brushes, I think what you have to do is a little bit of mild detergent or soap after you've used them, wash them out. That's a, and they'll last you a long time. Some of my favourite brushes are over 30 years old and still going. It's just lovely. You get your favourites. You sort of fall in love with your favourite brushes, which is rather nice. OK. Um, yeah. So I've, I've kind of given myself a little bit of a guideline here just to get myself going so I don't... Um, so I know where I'm headed, bearing in mind the time. Again, I wouldn't normally, and, and you'll find this, I don't normally, I normally sort of splash around, and I don't normally um, use any, like the line I use comes from the brush. Uh, so whatever I do tonight will be directed by the brush. But what I think I'll firstly do is, now traditionally you'd lay a, you'd lay a wash on a watercolour. And um, I'm not going to give you a traditional wash tonight. That sounds wrong, doesn't it? I'm not going to wash you traditionally. <laughs> I'm going to uh, get some other appliance and wash you with the fire hydrant or whatever. So um, there we go. Um, so it's about sort of laying really down the tone. When you're using watercolour, um, using any paint, you've got white paper, you've got to get rid of that because it's incredibly inhibiting. You can sit there and stare at white paper forever because you don't want to make a start. You've paid a lot of money for the paper or whatever. Incidentally, I'm using, this is um, Arsh. No, it's not actually. This is a Bockingford, beg your pardon. Um, and it, it comes, it's not on a block at all, it sheets of around about, I think, 180, what block you, blocking for 180, so it may cockle slightly, and these days I'm just not in the habit of stretching paper. If I want to do something really heavy, I'll get a heavy paper, like a 320 or a 400 GSM squared paper. Um, I also use Cardi paper, I'm just telling you a few about papers. Some of you might like Cardi, you might be very aware of it, it comes in various uh, grades. It's 100% cotton, uh, it's a lot cheaper than uh, machine pressed papers, and I rather like it, and there's some works that are done on Cardi, it's, it's a lot rougher. Um, it's great, actually. I hope it's ethically made, but we'll find out at some point. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just start up. Um, You've got to warm yourself up, so I'm looking here at, uh, this is my box, it's got 24 colours in it, I won't use them all, I'm going from one end with an ultramarine blue and a cerulean blue at the other, they're just favourite kind of colours, and start to lay something down, hopefully, is that, yeah, that's showing up okay, right, good. It's quite nice actually working horizontally for a change, it's like a luxury. Always put enough watercolour on. Um, keep the brush well loaded. And what I'm going to do as well, there's a, there's a light in the air, and I'm going to start to introduce a little bit of orange, even at this stage. There's the orange going in, and it will blend with the blue, and it will pick up the blue and run with it. Why I use orange, not a, a, a yellow, is the yellow will turn it green, and you get a green sky. I don't want a green sky. No one wants green skies. Um, again, you can play a bit. This is already cockling, it's arcing out. Uh, what happens if you um, begin to sort of drop watercolour on areas that have already had pigment on them, you may get what are known as uh, water, uh, back runs or cauliflowers. That's a technique that uh, watercolourists admire and love. Uh, those that don't know what they're doing, try and get rid of them immediately, and I wouldn't ever do that. So um, go with the flow, literally, go with the flow. Just guiding the watercolour around. And I'm just going to... I'm adding lots of water. It's really quite fresh, all of this. I'm adding water, and I'm guiding it around the building. But occasionally, what I'm going to do is just drop it down into the building, like that. Uh, the building, which is going to form under here. And I might just drop a little bit of yellow ochre into that, and that will become very clear later on. When you're, when you're doing watercolour, what you have to do is think ahead and think backwards. It's a bit like if you're a printmaker... 
um, that printmakers have to think backwards as well. It's, it's a bit tricky thinking backwards. You have to try and, if you're going to do modern watercolour, not Victorian watercolour, like the ones in stately homes, you think backwards and what you're actually doing is you're reverse what we call reserving the whites. You are not painting white. The white comes from the reflected light that is coming through the paper, okay? So I'm just sort of flowing through here now. Um, and already I've got a skyline that's beginning to define the pier. Watercolour can be very quick. If I do happen to finish this way, way on schedule, I'll do something else for you, so don't worry. Uh, you'll get your money's worth. Sometimes watercolours slow down. Sometimes you turn up, if you're like me, you're vulnerable, we're all vulnerable, you turn up and you've had a hard day with the students and you think, I hope I can paint tonight. Um, everyone looks at you and knows that they're paying you good money and you're going to do the, do, do the business, but sometimes you actually, can I do this? And we're all sort of racked with guilt and fear and everything. We're, no one is any different to anyone else, but I think expertise and belief and the courage to know you can have a go and pull it off is what it's all about, and you have to have that. And, and it's really interesting watching young people, 16-year-olds, um, struggling to have the confidence to take a piece of paper and just do things. And you say, well, why are you, why are you frightened of it? What's it going to do to you? Um, nothing. You know, if it, oh, it might go wrong. Well, that's all right. I'll give you another piece of paper. <coughs> or put it to one side and we can do something else with it. There's no, and, and I think sometimes as well, and I think back to, I don't know, I don't know anything about, you know, I, this isn't a, a night of catharsis or anything, but I don't know about your upbringing or your background with education, but people made some really weird rules at school. It's like, oh, don't draw with a ruler. Well, why not if you want to draw a straight line? You know what I mean? So like, who says, oh, you've got to learn to draw a line freehand? No, you don't. If you want a, if you want a straight line that's perfect, use a ruler. And if you want a nice little broken edge, you, you do it freehand. But people invent rules, and I, I've never understood this. And I, part of my life's work is to unpick the rules and ask the questions. So you meet the students, and they think that, you know, uh, it's good old didactic education. Sorry, have any of you teachers here? No, didactic, uh, from the blackboard, by rote. Good old-fashioned didactic education. Boom, OK. I say it, write it down, you copy it, you listen to me. And, and, and actually, art, art isn't like that. And um, didactic is fine when you're learning things by rote. You, maybe you learn the times table by rote, and that's all good. But sometimes, actually, didactic is not a good thing. It's better to share it, to discuss it, to say, what are the rules, and actually to ask questions. So I'll always be asking questions. And when I'm painting watercolours, I'm constantly asking questions. By the way, I, I should have said to you, I'm using quite a large brush for this paper. I, I don't tend to go, if I buy a pack of, of uh, brushes, the little ones are for, so I'm, I'm learning that to coordinate, there we go. Little ones are for sort of, you know, picking up the detail later, but initially it's all about nice broad strokes. So now I'm heading into the water. And this could be fun. Be brisk, be courageous. Pick up some of the sort of lovely waves on the water, add lots of water. Why? It's watery, it's wet. So really, it's sort of uh, what I'm saying is, um, as it's choppy and as it's happening, in you go. Get stuck in. In fact, get so stuck in that you actually even want to I'm thinking under the pier, I'm a little bit premature here, but I'm thinking under the pier it's going to be nice and dark. I'm picking up um, a violet, mixing it with the blue and dropping in some darker areas. Because you're always going to get a shadow. We can always add a bit more later on, but drop some of that shadow, ultramarine with violet, into there and let it go. Have a little bit of that coming down like that. So tell me if I'm going too fast for you. <laughs> You're very quiet. You all all right? You sure? Happening before your eyes, I know. I'm working actually from, um, it's, it's, it's a partial sketch that I, it's a part watercolour. It's not a photo, it is a photo. It's, it's a scan of, of, of the watercolour. So I've got that there. But it won't look like that. 
any more than, this is the way I do it. You see, normally you have your sketch and it's there. Why I do the sketch is to get the tone, tonality right. So the bits I'm doing here, where I'm saying it's darker under here, I've already worked out some darker areas and, and the movement. And that's what I'm doing now. This is, is giving me an idea of some of the colours that I was using. But I'm always inventive, and, and, and for as much as I'm looking to the side, I'm also deciding that um, I won't necessarily follow uh, verbatim what I'm looking at. So that's, that's the answer to that. Okay, that's good. What I might do at this point, sometimes I take these out with me, spray up. Just a bit. When I'm um, painting, sometimes it starts raining and what you get is little spray spots like that and they're rather nice, they give a sort of evocation. But that actually would happen for real because very often it's either spray coming up off the sea itself or it's me uh, out in the rain being foolish and getting wet. Um, Many years ago, when I first started teaching at, at, at the University for the Creative Arts, I used to take students out painting in the rain. I, I've written a book and there's a chapter on painting in the rain. It's great because nature can do it for you. You just have to know when to run into the pub or put the umbrella up. Um, it's a really good thing to do. And I've sort of reserved a lot of white there and I'll come back to some of this later on. But you've got, so essentially, what you've got going on here is so I, dark red is sort of there, and then there's some waves that are breaking. Um, how far you refine that, and you can come back and refine that a little bit later on, is entirely up to you, depending on the kind of interpretation. And again, it's a bit like people that paint trees. Do you paint every leaf, which you can do, or do you create the tones and the movements and interpret it so that people can understand by filling in the gaps with their brain about what's going on? because we're all very aware of what happens when it's rough at sea, and, and you're basically putting the clues in people, people's brains. It's a bit of a game, and I like playing those kind of games. But equally, some of you here might say, do you know, when I paint the sea, I look at every wave and every movement and all of the light, and that's absolutely acceptable as well. There's no one hard and fast rule. Um, I'm talking about that light here, and I'm, I'm gonna drop a little bit of um, cadmium red light into the sky, into the sea. So I actually would use red in the sea and take that up. This is all still quite wet, by the way. This is what we call wet in wet. I'll take that up into the sky and just let it go. I often say, let it go, let it go, let it bleed into the other colours. And some of that will back run as well. Now, obviously, what I'm saying to you is based on what I know is going to happen. Uh, if you're having a go for the first time and you're not sure, you've got no idea what's going to happen. But I think you have a go anyway, because you might have what, we, what I term for the students a happy accident. Now, they're not always happy about it, but I think it's great. Watercolour is a, is a medium that you uh, have to have a relationship with. Now, I'm married and I've got a wife and I have a relationship with her. We often compromise over things. Sometimes she wins, sometimes I win. It's not that we're in a fight, but we're very different. Uh, we, don't, we have similarities and we have differences. Uh, watercolour won't talk back like your wife, but what it will do is do its own thing. So you'll be trying to control it and it won't happen. Now, some relationships are like that. Uh, husband tells wife what to do, she'll have none of it and does her own thing anyway, etc. You might not even be married, <laughs> forgive me. Um, and I'm now dealing with, sorry, that's, that's very conventional because actually um, I've, I also teach four trans students and that's really complicated for me because I'm from an era like you when I'm actually struggling to get my head around some of this. I really do struggle with it. I have to respect it. I have to think about how the person might feel about themselves. I listen to things on the radio about the Tavistock Centre. I, I try to become informed about the things that are going on. But I think we struggle. Um, so it's good to paint as well. Um, takes you away from the struggles of what you're listening to on radio for, if it's bothering you. Or um, indeed, how did I get into this? Oh, relationship with paint. And uh, you have a relationship. Forgive me. Um, one of the students said to me, you're always saying weird things. It's like you're always thinking, do you ever switch off? It's so not really. You go to Sainsbury and you look at the cornflakes you're about to buy and you're just like looking at the art on them, the colour, and you're looking at the... 
And they said, that's weird, man. I said, well, if you hang around here too long, <laughs> but actually, as weird as it is, it's, it's, it's a lovely thing as well to, to be informed and to feel a sense of, I think, of empowerment and and knowing that you can be who you want to be and enjoy the things and, and be informing and hopefully, in my case, using things like this to change people's lives. So, um, how very noble. <laughs> Has anyone got anything to say so far? Are you all all right? <laughs> yeah? We've been in time. Well, okay, that's all right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at Art Profile, when it used to be Barbara, you remember Barbara, don't you, those of you that book, but Barbara used to ring me up and say, what exactly are you doing when you go out? She, I, I'm not unhappy with it, but, but they try to sort of explain what on earth you've been doing. You know we're paying you to demonstrate, don't you? And I went, well, yeah, 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 I am doing that. You know, that's what I'm doing, so. Um, so far, so good. So what I've actually done now, without telling you, is I've, I've gone around the figure area. So there's two figures running down the beach here, and these will become a lot clearer later on. So I've laid the sky. I've put some, some little bits of rain in there and some atmosphere. I've dropped cadmium red light into the sea and into the sky, and I've given some, some waves and some froth. And that's feeling good. That's a good basis at 8 o'clock. Uh, so that's actually, when you look at it, there's quite a lot done already. And I think this is the thing I'm trying to say to you. Don't hang around. Don't keep rubbing out your pencil work. Just get in there. Do the best job you can, and it will take you years to perfect it, but it's worth it. So just get on and do the business and see what happens. Um, have confidence in your abilities. I'm probably, you're probably all like masters. You know, I'm saying all of this, and you're, you're sitting there going, <laughs> got this guy coming along tonight. He thinks we're all amateurs. Well, we're not, are we? I mean, you're... We're Wallington's next best thing. It's happening around here, Carl Shorten and, um, yeah. I used to drive, I, I work for a national newspaper as well, um, which in Brighton should remain nameless, lest I get killed. Um, and I used to drive up through Wallington, um, used to do nights and lates and you know, I've been through it when it's flooded under the bridge, and I've been through it. I used to look at the gun shop down the road, and I used to look at the lovely Art Deco wall with the before you go around near the Wandle. And I, I kind of know this place, but I don't really, you know. And I, I once had a puncture, so that quick fit tire place as you go around the corner beside the Wandle as you're heading off towards the back side of the Pearly Way, and you're heading down <coughs> towards Mitcham. And I, I know this place, guys. I know it from an A23-ish kind of way. Um, it's good. Right, what I'm doing now, so I, I hoodwinked you there, um, I'm laying in some beach. I love my colour, and, um, and my beach is coming in in a cadmium red with a little bit of orange in it at the moment. And, and I'm sticking to my guns, and that's what it's going to be for me. That's cool. It's quite dry. Um, this area here, quite dry brush. It's not as wet as I did the sky. And again, with watercolour, it's about getting a feeling, and now I've added some water, some wet. Why? Because I want to blend something slightly lighter in there, an orange. So that's an orange into a cadmium red light. So it's cadmium red light, the same that I put into the sea. I'm just laying down some beach. Um, I think I was talking to students the other day about, about what it's like to be an artistic fiddler. We all fiddle a bit. And the idea is, with all of this stuff, is don't fiddle too much. Hit it and do it. Hit it once, you can come back to it again, but just do the thing. Get in there and do it. Because with watercolour, if you have more than probably five stains, it starts to go muddy and it loses its freshness and it loses its spirit. If it is that movement that you're after, you need to maintain that sort of spirit of movement and lightness. And here we are, sort of just guide that along. So that's, that's a bit of beach. It's quite a vivid beach, but I like that. I like the, the boldness of that. Um, it's also slight light because Brighton Beach is pebbly. It won't appear that orange. But I'm sort of, I, I'm not, not going to care too much about that anymore. I, I spend, when I go abroad, I love the sort of Mediterranean uh, light and, and, and what you get. And I just think we've got to sort of respond to colour in, in the way that's appropriate to us. Um, I'm also colour blind. It's true. So um, around about the 
age of 14, they give you a test when you're at school and they say, well, you can't be an electrician, you can't be a pilot, you can't be a police officer, you can't be this, that and the other. They never said you couldn't be an artist. Well, that was good. Um, good job, really. Uh, although, when I went to art school uh, in Rochester, where I ended up teaching, because um, I grew up in the Medway towns, um, I did lie, because I was thinking that I'd never get in. Um, Weird that, isn't it? Because now you'd be handed extra funding and, you know, they let you in now. Yeah. More than let you in. But I was so, so scared that if I declared colour blindness, I wouldn't get a place at art school. So I kind of I, I lied a bit. You know, I didn't, didn't feel good about it, but I did get a place, which was great. And when I got there, I went, well, that's not, not a problem to us. Just... What, what colours do you have trouble with? Um, I always jump red lights. <laughs> red, green. No, red, 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 I don't jump lights. Uh, red, 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 green is common. Um, yeah. So I'm just telling you what I'm doing now. I'm actually coming underneath the pier and I'm dropping in some blue, which is just blending. If you use this nice Bockingford, uh, you can just sort of bleed the colour in and just let it... It's lovely. You, sort of start, you can start to dab and just let it all kind of begin to happen and it happens for you. Again, you don't fiddle. You just sort of... And I'm just sort of like, look at the, the hold of the brush is right back there. Sort of balance point. It's almost like, and this is what I like about tonight for me, is I'm, I'm working in a more natural position, uh, allowing the pressure and the weight of the brush down to the ferrule to actually to work for me, work in my favour, which is really lovely. Um, yeah, red, green. So I don't know. I mean, someone said, well, what do you see there? I said, well, I don't know. I see what I see. I don't know what you see. How do I, how do I know? I mean, I only know because they test my rods and cones. It's a funny old thing. Okay. We're all right so far. We are coming up to seven past eight, so I'm going to push and move on and start to indicate some of the... I've got to let some of this dry, so I'm going to move down the front here. This is still wet as well. This is the problem you have, so you have to sort of like sort of lift over and above your a um, little bit of purple mixed with now a little bit of... Um, neutral tint, which is in my box. It's like a purple, but it's, it's, it's between purple and black. And the other one, which is slightly bluer, is Payne's Grey, which some of you may know. Don't use black with watercolour. It's the absence of colour. It absolutely kills the freshness of watercolour. It just does. That said, if you're Max Beckman or a German expressionist, you will use black and you'll pull it off. But I'd <laughs> recommend people that don't know how to use black with watercolour not to attempt it because you will kill your colours. Unless you're doing a black and white study, and that's a different matter, because you're using it therefore tonally. Um, so what we're doing is now establishing, um, coming along the pier, establishing the line of the pier. Now, when you look at structures, the light is always playing on them. So in fact, often they look quite solid, but the light's still playing. So what I like to do is just break up the solidity of that by dropping a little bit of extra heavy and just allowing parts of it to be lighter. And just keep sort of breaking that up as you go along and adding a little bit darker and heavier in, in places like there and come along, line underneath there, like that. It's all very, um, the problem we're trying to teach this is, it, it's, it's almost, there's a certain amount of intuition involved where you're just sort of going with your gut feeling of how things look. So getting back from it, looking at it, thinking, yeah, that looks all right. Approximations and just moving to and fro, backwards and forwards, down to the edge, just let some of that go, just dropping it in. It's still nice and wet there, so I can just let that bleed in like that and there. Let that in there, nice and wet. And I might even let some of that just drop down there and there and there, and there. And if it still looks too heavy, you can just knock it back again with a bit of water. So it's really about pooling water with pigment and making something happen, making something work. And then dropping some of that. Remember, there's always a kind of reflection, there's always a sort of shadow that goes down into the reflective water. So you're beginning to sort of drop some of that area there. So it's very... Um... Can you see what I'm doing? I'm adding water, I'm adding pigment, I'm taking it off, I'm putting it on. It's very sort of push and pull, all of this. Um, 
which isn't easy if you're the sort of person that wants to be in control, which is what I said to you about 15 minutes ago. This, this is going to be hard for you because you're not going to be able to control it like you'd be able to control other things if you're going to work in this kind of way. I've, it's quite interesting, actually. I've lent on there, but I don't mind that. Actually, it's quite fun there. I've made some texture. I've also got a red hand. Uh, if, you're, if you're like that, what, what you would essentially do is get yourself a piece of paper and just sort of lean on it. But for the purposes of tonight, I'm not too, too, too worried about that. Okay. Part of the roof now of the pier, coming down here, lovely bits of light, dropping that down. Just letting that just bleed like that. And, and, and sometimes you just got to trust it. It will do its thing. This is where I start to draw the line. And there's a structure to the roof of the pier. And I'm just going to draw it out in that kind of way. Suddenly things begin to take on a shape and a form and they look slightly different. There we go. See that? Keep it nice and dark in one place. We're playing a light source. It's darker over here. It's lighter over there. You can see from the sky the light's coming in this way. So um, be mindful of, of what science is doing. Drop some of that down. Drop some of that down. Some of that. But what I'm going to do now is pick up some yellow ochre and possibly even a tiny bit of orange. And I'm going to make some building. I'm going to let some of that blue come into the yoker down here. Just let some of that come down like that. And also I'm going to leave some of it kind of white because there's nothing better than having a sort of nice sharp white crispness in some of the paper. Again, it's all about that reflection and how we respond to whiteness of paper against tonality. A little bit too red, so I'm going to add a bit more ochre in. I do, you know, I've got a plate there, but I don't, I, I just tend to mix live on the paper. I just don't have the time anymore. Why all this happened was when I was telling you about my daughter, um, when they started to speak, so first of all, you put them in the backpack and put them on their back and they'd be silent because they were babies. As soon as they started to be able to reason and speak, they'd say, Dad, can we go now? And you just started painting, they'd, they'd be with you. Dad, can we go now? And, and you'd have to pack up and go or you'd have to stay. Or, like me, you'd have to learn to work very quickly. So um, that was part of... I mean, I thank my daughter, really, because she got me working incredibly quickly. I used to spend days on watercolours, and suddenly I was doing them live in the moment there. And then uh, I had no choice. Dad, can we go now, please? Dad, I need the toilet. Dad, are we there yet? Dad. Um, and that's good training. It's good training to be a father. It's good training to be a watercolourist. Dad, can we go? Dad, have you put that wash on yet? Dad, you've done those highlights. Dad, I need to go. Working my way down the building, and what I love about watercolour is, bearing in mind it's, it could be slightly misty, where sometimes it's bright and you, you can't even see out very far, so you can begin to sort of tone some of that down and just give a hint that something's going on. Like that. This is what Turner was doing. This is what Turner was doing when the Royal Academy couldn't accept him. It was around about 100 years ahead of his time. And we're like, what are you... Well, has that gone blurry? It has. Why has that gone blurry? Maybe it's focusing on your hair. On my hair? Ah, there we go. Sorry. There we go. So here, this is what Turner was doing. You should have said. Um, that's what Turner was kind of doing 100 years before his time. He was playing. The Impressionists were doing it, but they were slightly... Even they weren't accepted because it wasn't Academy stuff. It wasn't hard-edged. It wasn't doing what, what, what we were meant to be doing. I'm realising we're coming up to... Um, coming up to quarter past eight, so we'll have a break in a moment. But I just want to get a little bit further down here so you've at least got things to see in the, in the interval of how it's sort of going. Is everyone all right so far? Yeah? yeah. yeah? You sure? I want you to be honest. I, I have a... I, I say to the students, you know, excuse my French, but I have a no-bullshit policy at, at college. 
And, and I want honesty and I want people to say, this is how it is. Yeah, I was late today. Yeah, I didn't bother coming in. I couldn't get up, blah, blah, blah. I'd rather they did that than try to bluff me because we can work with people if, they, if they're honest with you. And, um, and it's the same anyway, you know, just be honest. If you don't like what I'm doing, I'll do something else or whatever. Um, but it sounds like you do, you are okay. So that's fine. So we've worked along. So just to recap, all good learning. I'm just dropping a bit in there. So there, that was all nice and wet. And I've just dropped a little bit of dark in there. So let that, let that be in there. This has dried. It's pulled itself into some back runs. We'll work on that a bit later. Speckly here. You can come and look at this for real. Um, quite like what's going on there. If you don't like something, by the way, you can always take a little bit of tissue. Don't do this too often. And just lift bits out like that. So just lift it out. I want it a bit lighter as well as sort of washing it down with, 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 with water or whatever. So coming up under here, giving a little bit of structure. It's amazing, you've only got to start toning up areas and suddenly things come to life. Structures appear and it can just be the most subtle of brush strokes. We'll give you the front of the pier. Um, and that's what I love about it. It's, it's subtle, it's a bit sexy, it's hard to use, it'll take you a lifetime to perfect. Just when you think you've got it right, it, it compromises with you, you're trying to have that relationship. All those things are happening, and yet you're, like all good love relationships, you're compelled. You're still in love with it, despite everything. I don't know how we got to that as well. Is it tea or what? <laughs> Okay, just to let you know, I've got some sketchbooks you can look at. I did bring some cards um, and some books, but it's cost of living, hard earned. You're paying your money tonight, you don't have to buy a single thing. I've got this pot you can put coins in. Cards are 250 Put your money in, take your change or whatever. Um, but please, no obligation because I'm being paid. But I just thought I'd bring them along anyway. You can have a look at some, some watercolours that have already done on travels, sketchbooks. Please come and just indulge yourselves and have a nice cup of tea at interval time. And I should go and take a breath. Would you like, um, Would you like tea or coffee?